So in this video, we're going to talk about tax division and elasticity of demand. What tax division and elasticity of demand is, it is the division of tax between buyers and sellers that depends in part on elasticity of demand and in part on elasticity of supply. So we'll talk about the elasticity of demand part first. And there are two cases. And the first case is a perfectly inelastic demand, and that is when buyers pay the entire tax and perfectly uh, elastic demand when sellers pay the entire tax. The more inelastic the demand, the larger is the buyer's share of the tax. So let's get started. Um, so let's take a look at this graph at first. And this graph is a perfectly inelastic demand graph, which I marked here. The demand for this good is perfectly inelastic, so that can be seen by the vertical demand curve we have here. And when we add tax to this, uh, this curve, the supply curve actually moves up. So you can see, you can see that the supply curve actually moved up from two dollars to two twenty, and the buyers will pay the entire tax. The idea behind this is that the buyers must buy the good or service. Even if the price rises, the amount does not change, so the buyers pay the entire tax. So even though we increase the price, the buyers still pay for the product. And an example product of uh, that exhibits perfectly inelastic demand would probably be uh, insulin for diabetics. Uh, because if the diabetics don't buy it, then they'll die. Now, the second uh, example is perfectly elastic demand, and in this case, the demand for the good is perfectly elastic, and the demand curve is horizontal, as, as you can see here, uh, with, the adult, with the dollar price mark. So, in this case, with the tax existing on the good, the sellers pay the entire tax. So, you can see in this graph that normally, without tax, we were the quantity that was being sold was 4, but with the tax, the quantity actually decreased and sellers paid the entire tax. Uh, the idea behind this is that the buyers can substitute goods. So the sellers pay the entire tax. The price, uh, the price received by the sellers decreases. So in this case, the sellers actually uh, get only receive ninety cents on their sales, whereas before they received a dollar without the tax. So ten cents of the, of the of the price that the buyers pay goes to the tax. So that is that. Uh, usually, demand is neither. Uh, perfectly elastic nor perfectly inelastic so the tax is split and again remember that the division of the division depends on the elasticity of demand the more inelastic the demand is the larger the tax paid by the buyers now we're gonna go through the tax division and elasticity of supply much the same as the demand part but then these two cases are uh, modified and the two cases are perfectly inelastic supply in which the sellers pay the entire tax remember that perfectly inelastic demand the buyers pay the entire tax not the sellers but in this case it's the sellers paying the entire tax in a perfectly elastic supply the buyers pay the entire tax and again the more elastic the supply is then the larger is the buyer's share of the tax. So the supply of the good in this example is perfectly inelastic. The supply curve is vertical and again with the tax existing on the good the sellers pay the entire tax and takes the decrease in price received. So then the sellers actually receive two dollars on their sale of 220. Now the buyers only buy at a certain price and won't stand a price rise. So then if the sellers don't pay the entire tax, there will be a surplus of products left. So then taking the tax, paying the tax, keeps their customers buying. And that is 
an example of perfectly inelastic supply. Now, for a perfectly elastic or that's an example of perfectly inelastic, yeah, perfectly inelastic supply. This example of perfectly elastic, su uh, elastic supply, the supply of the good is perfectly elastic because the supply curve is horizontal, and with the tax existing on the good, the buyers will pay the entire tax and take the increase in price. And this will actually cause a decrease in quantity sold. As you can see, we went from a quantity of five being sold without the tax to a quantity of three uh, with the buyers paying the entire tax. And again, usually the supply uh, is neither cases. That is that uh, usually the supply is neither perfectly inelastic or nor perfectly elastic, the and tax is split between buyers and sellers. And how the tax splits depends on the elasticity of supply. The more elastic the supply is, the larger is the buyer's share of the tax. Now, uh, we're just going to go through the tax and taxes in practice. A couple of examples, and we'll end the video. Taxes are often imposed on goods and services with an inelastic demand or an inelastic supply. An example of this is alcohol, tobacco, and gasoline all have inelastic demand, so the buyers pay most of the tax on them. Now, labor has a low elasticity of supply, so the seller, which in this case is the worker or the employee pays most of the income tax and social security tax. And those are two examples of taxes in practice. Now, that's all I have for this video. Please rate, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.